So if a familiar spirit is giving you details that are known to you about your past, about your present, one thing you know for sure is that they will not have the ability to influence change in the events that are taking place. But God, through his gifts, is able to effect change and, 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 and also produce conviction on the basis of these gifts. So my advice to many Christians is when you're approaching things of God, get rid of fear. This approach of fear towards the things of God inhibits us from experiencing the fullness of God. Shine, search my heart and all you will find is love for you. All I got is love for you. Oh, yeah, yeah. there's no lie, I will hold you. Come over, forever be my lover. Woman in the sun, come on, look at you. Call me a drink. Hello, hello. I just spilled some coffee on the table. Hope it's not visible for you guys i almost said audible hope the spilling of the coffee is not visible to you guys i guess for spiritual civilizations they that would make sense if i say it hope this is not audible it is supposed that adam could hear light and see sound we don't know how true that is but yeah you're welcome to amazing minds zambia's first late night show today is friday bible talks excited for this one we didn't have five o'clock last week uh yeah uh if you're not subscribed please subscribe hit that bell and share uh, we're glad to have you here as new subscribers the show is available mondays wednesdays and fridays uh 20 hours central african time and you can listen to the podcast on google podcasts apple podcasts and spotify this is a late night show with three segments first is monday which is the political segment um, Wednesday is for the educative segment and Friday is Bible Talks. So you're welcome to Bible Talks. We've been doing a series on the gifts of the Spirit, or as they are referred to in the New King James, the manifestation of the Spirit. So there are nine gifts of the Spirit. We tackled Word of Wisdom. Uh, we started by tackling what the gifts are, and uh, we, we later tackled word of wisdom. Today we're discussing word of knowledge, that one contentious and almost controversial gift, even, even though it shouldn't be so. You see, anything that comes from the Holy Spirit should not be taken controversially, neither should it be taken with uh, much judgment. Remember when Jesus performed miracles, cast out devils, and they called him the prince of demons, Beelzebub, and he said, if you speak against the Son of Man, you'll be forgiven. If you speak against the Father, you'll be forgiven. But any man who speaks against the Holy Spirit will not be forgiven either in this age or in the age to come. This means that the Spirit of God is the protected member of the Godhead. Uh, Isaiah 6, is it Isaiah 6, 63 or 10, 63? It says, uh, they vexed his Holy Spirit and he himself turned and became their enemy. Uh, referring to God the Father. So we know that Jesus defends the Holy Spirit. We also know that God the Father defends the Holy Spirit. And therefore the works that the Holy Spirit does are sacred. They are holy works. If you study how God instructed Moses to build the tabernacle and how he told him that certain parts should not be touched by certain things because they'll be made holy, you know, the placing of certain things upon certain things made them holy. And the gifts of the Spirit are holy. Every gift that the Lord, the Holy Spirit, deposits into your spirit is holy. And therefore, it should be taken with a high sense of reverence. And the problem is with gifts like word of knowledge, they can appear too strange, even to the believer, to the extent that believers are calling this gift familiar spirits and all manner of things, astral projection and whatnot. Yeah, but there is a legitimate gift, and we're going to give you examples uh, from the Bible, from the ministry of Jesus himself, I, I told you how I will try to give you examples. As long as I'm the one presenting that particular gift, uh, we haven't yet had 
a man of God in studio, a pastor in studio, or a preacher in studio uh, as a guest to to speak on one of the gifts. We'll have one soon. But so far, I'm the one who's been <laughs> telling you about these gifts. And today we're discussing word of knowledge. So as long as I'll be the one explaining this to you, I'll give you examples from the ministry of Jesus just so I can give you a clear understanding of what this would mean. All right, let's get into it. First Corinthians 12 verse 8. For to one is given the word of wisdom through the spirit, to another the word of knowledge through the same spirit. So these are the gifts of the spirit that are being listed down here. The first one being the word of knowledge. We, we, we talked about it uh, the other week. Word of knowledge is where God gives you a glimpse into his wisdom. You see things from his perspective. So this is like God giving you advice, uh, God giving you counsel, God opening your eyes to see things from his perspective. There's a song I love by one Matt Gilman. God, I look to you, it says, uh, God, I look to you, I will not be overwhelmed. Give me wisdom to see things like you do. And many times when we see things from our perspective, we get overwhelmed because we just don't comprehend how in our own ability we'll be able to, you know, find a way out of this situation. But then uh, God gives us a glimpse into his wisdom, how he perceives things. And because we see things the way God sees them, we obviously see the many ways out of any given situation. There are so many examples of this in the Bible. We can think of Solomon exercising godly wisdom when he has two mothers crying for one child. And he says, all right, let's split this child in between. And, and, and we'll see. I actually watched the funny clip recently of a man trying to use, apply the same wisdom. And he said, all right, you both are crying for this hundred dollar bill. Let me split it in between and you get half each. And uh, it didn't go as he thought. Well, it's because godly wisdom cannot just be mimicked. There should be a spiritual inspiration behind this word of wisdom. It's not concocted from imitation. So word of wisdom is God giving you a glimpse, a glimpse into his wisdom supernaturally. And word of knowledge acts in a similar way, except this is God now allowing you to peer into his knowledge. Now, there's many ways that word of knowledge works. I'll try to break it down for you in the simplest way I can. But word of knowledge involves either you looking into matters in the knowledge of God. So you begin to know what know what God knows about a particular situation, or you begin to see things the way he sees them, causing you to know them the way he knows them. Or God can open your eyes into the fourth dimension. We talked about this a couple of weeks ago. I told you about how we are three dimensional beings living in tour, living in a four dimensional world. And this means that even though we can see three dimensions, we experience the fourth dimension, but we can't perceive it. So uh, our dimensions being height, length, and breadth. We see things, everything through that. The only reason I'm able to tell the end of this table from the other end is because I can measure length. And the only reason I'm able to see this end from that end is because I can measure width. And the reason why I know how tall this table is is because I can measure height. But there are other dimensions that I can't see that exist. So it, it's very possible that there could be a building right in front of me here, but it's existing in different dimensions that I can't see. And I gave you an example of a fish that uh, would only be seeing in two dimensions. That would be length and breadth. And this fish would not be able to understand what a tree looks like because a tree is upward. And therefore, time being a fourth dimension would be something that we experience yet not see. So we can't measure the end from the beginning of time. But God being someone who sees time outside, who can perceive time as we would perceive length and height, God is able to uh, see the beginning and the end of time. So God is also able to cause us to ascend in this gift and peer into the corridors of time, which would allow us to exercise these prophetic gifts 
If we look into the past, we're able to see word of knowledge. If we look into the present and look at complicated situations, we're able to, to exercise word of wisdom. If we look into the future, we're able to exercise prophecy. And we're going to talk about prophecy much later in this uh, series of gifts. But word of knowledge can work in those two ways. Either God can impart his knowledge to you about a situation, can open your eyes to see it the way he's seeing it, or he can raise you into the ability to perceive the fourth dimension. And when you perceive the fourth dimension, you realize that every event that has ever happened is still as it was. And so when you look into it, you still see it the way it happened. And yeah, this is what the word of knowledge would mean. Let me give you a few examples from Jesus' uh, ministry of this word of knowledge. John chapter four, verse 16 to 19. Jesus said to her, go, call your husband and come here. The woman answered and said, I have no husband. Jesus said to her, you have well said, I have no husband. For you have had five husbands and the one whom you have now is not your husband. In that you spoke truly. The woman said to him, sir, I perceive that you are a prophet. Now it's not strange that this woman, uh, perceived Jesus to be a prophet on the basis of him telling her facts that she already knew about herself. And this is the argument that many believers give. Imagine believers are giving these arguments <laughs> that, oh, well, what, what's the point of this gift if they're only going to tell you what your name is and what your location is and what your number is if you already know those details? Well, Jesus did it here. He told this woman, the woman, the, the husband you're with now is not your husband for you have had five husbands. And in this you have spoken truly. And this alone prompted the woman to go and tell the whole city, come and meet a man who told me everything about my life. So this gift in itself, even without in the inclusion of word of wisdom or word of, of, of prophecy, in God's wisdom has a purpose. And in us questioning the gift of word of knowledge, we are questioning the very wisdom of the spirit of God in giving this gift. Because remember the scripture says, for to one is given the word of wisdom, to another is given the word of knowledge. So it's very possible that a person can carry this one gift alone, word of knowledge. So word of knowledge is you peering into facts that have already happened and existed that are established. They're unchanging. You're looking into the unchanging components of time. This is word of knowledge. Let me give you another example of Jesus exercising this gift. John chapter one, verse 47 to 49. Jesus saw Nathanael coming toward him and said to him, behold, an Israelite indeed in whom is no deceit. Nathanael said to him, how do you know me? Jesus answered and said to him, before Philip called you, when you were under the fig tree, I saw you. Nathanael answered and said to him, Rabbi, you are the son of God. You are the king of Israel. Now, at the time, the Israelites had been waiting for this person that had been prophesied by Moses and by the prophets uh, that they called the Messiah or the son of God or the king of Israel, because they understood Jesus' political assignment, which he is coming back for when he returns. But they believed that assignment to be the one he would perform when he came the first time. And Jesus Christ came not to perform that assignment, but to be a sacrifice for our sake. Now, when uh, Philip went to call Nathaniel, he told him, come and see the one that Moses and the prophets told us about, the Messiah. And when Nathaniel came, as he was approaching Jesus, told him something that only he would know. Firstly, he told him his character. Secondly, he told him where he was standing, even without Jesus seeing him. And this prompted Philip to believe in the Messiah, the Christ, the son of the living God, the King of Israel. Now, in both accounts, we see people believing in Jesus on the basis of a word of knowledge. Jesus had not given a prophecy, neither had he given a word of wisdom. Do we see the purpose that this gift serves? So when a man or a prophet comes to you and says, ah, I see that your name is Jennifer and you live in uh, house number two, John Road, and your number is 0921234567. Even though you already know those details and those are public details, the man did not know the details. This is to show you the supernatural nature 
of God, the supernatural giftings of God working within a man. And these gifts are meant to lead you to believing on account of your awe when you are shocked, amazed, impressed by something you see happen that you couldn't do in your lifetime unless by the Spirit of God. Then your first reaction shouldn't be to think it's a, a monitoring spirit or a, a divining spirit or a, what do you call it, a familiar spirit or that he is astro projecting. <laughs> While all these things may be true about some people, they practice these things. The truth is that the gifts of God are always superior. They are always sharp to the detail. They're always true. And they always have the ability to produce a result. So if a familiar spirit is giving you details that are known to you about your past, about your present, one thing you know for sure is that they will not have the ability to influence change in the events that are taking place. But God, through his gifts, is able to effect change and, 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 and also produce conviction on the basis of these gifts. So my advice to many Christians is when you're approaching things of God, get rid of fear. This approach of fear towards the things of God inhibits us from experiencing the fullness of God. The Bible says perfect love casts away all fear. Those who live in fear have not been perfected in love for God did not give us a spirit of fear, but of power of love and of a sound mind. Therefore, we shouldn't always be suspicious and using our suspicion to discern falsehood. If you're not subscribed, please subscribe, hit that bell and share. I'm glad to have brought this gift to your attention. Uh, if you have learned something or you have a question, please leave it in the comments. I am glad to always see your engagement in our content. I'll be back here on Monday with Chofia, or as Siri calls him, Chofia, for the, for the political segment. For now, bye. Hey, like what you see? I know you do. Hit the button below to subscribe and don't forget to hit the notification bell. Ciao.